As Kwame Kilpatrick prepares to fight charges of corruption in Detroit, a whole lot of people are wondering about his lavish lifestyle in Texas, and more importantly, who's paying for it? 7 Action News investigator Scott Lewis traveled to the Lone Star State to get some much-needed answers. I have made the difficult decision, I believe the most difficult decision of my life, to step down as mayor of the city of Detroit. After Kwame Kilpatrick left office, he packed up the family and headed for Grand Prairie, Texas. You know, throughout the turmoil of 2008, not just in the city, but me and my wife, um, we wanted to find a place where we could heal. Kilpatrick says he decided on the Lone Star State after he and his wife sought counseling from Texas preacher T.D. Jakes. Texas is a place where a lot of people come for a new start, and so do we. A new start and some privacy. Kilpatrick can't walk a block in Detroit without a handshake or a shout-out. But in Grand Prairie, Texas, few are familiar with the famous ex-Detroiter in their midst. His name is Kwame Kilpatrick. Ever heard of him? Never heard of him. Could you take a wild guess what made him famous in Detroit? Baseball? Shoot, I don't know. And what's his name again? Kwame Kilpatrick. I, I talked to these Texans in the lower income center of town where folks flock here to get five tacos for five bucks on Tuesdays. This is Kilpatrick's side of town, the outer fringes of Grand Prairie, where new subdivisions have popped up like desert wildflowers after a spring rain. Fashionable homes made of brick and stone and sprawling new schools. Some sections are a bit hoity-toity and therein lies the controversy for Kilpatrick. When he was in prison, his wife and kids lived in this somewhat modest home, but after his release, the family moved into this 5,000 square foot house, paying 2,600 bucks a month in rent. At the time, Kilpatrick was paying nearly twice as much for cable and internet as he was paying in restitution to Detroit. Prosecutor Kim Worthy ripped off this letter to the Corrections Department, accusing Kilpatrick of living a lifestyle that exceeded his reported income. She claimed Kilpatrick was, quote, once again hiding assets. Worthy claimed Kilpatrick was spending 2000 more a month than he was taking in. Well, I mean, a full investigation was done of that. It was saying that she was not right. It's been wonderful to work with the state people and not uh, the county. I think a lot of times people do things for political reasons around here. After Worthy these protests, the state did raise Kilpatrick's restitution payment from $160 a month to $500, and he's up to date on his payments. He's also current on his community service, working 16 hours a month here at the Tarrant Community Food Bank. But some still question how Kilpatrick supports his lifestyle. Records he gave to the Corrections Department in 2011 showed sporadic speaking engagements as his main source of income. Are you really making enough money to afford all this? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I knew Scott had to come here with something. You know, uh, you know, we make enough money to pay the bills, Scott. Uh, you know, just like every family in America, we, we work hard. Uh, we, we work hard to make sure that we can do what we need to do for our children ourselves. But does he really need this much house? 5,000 square feet, 2,600 bucks a month? Could the Kilpatricks live in the same area with a little less extravagance? I'm a reporter with Channel 7 News in Detroit. I called a local realtor who gave me a list of these four more modest homes in Kilpatrick's neighborhood and the same school district. All four bedrooms from two to 3,000 square feet, leasing for $800 to $1,000 less a month than Kilpatrick's home. That's money that could be going to restitution if Kilpatrick was willing to trim back his lifestyle. At the current rate of $500 a month, it would take nearly 143 years to pay off his debt. And finally, how does Kilpatrick afford two cars? This 2012 Jeep Cherokee with Michigan plates is not in Kilpatrick's name. It's registered to the Shrine of the Black Madonna Church in Detroit. That's something the ex-mayor doesn't want to get into. What's the arrangement? Are they helping you out with the car? Can you tell us? Uh, well, you know, uh, I don't think that's any of uh, the, the city's business. Uh, you know, everything that I do, everybody knows about. And we'll keep it like that, Scott. I mean, uh, I could tell you this. Uh, we get a great deal of help from a lot of folks because they know it's a struggle. Well, Scott, Kwame says he's making enough to pay the bill. So what about Carlita Kilpatrick? Is she working at this point, helping out? Well, that's not really clear. At one point, Kilpatrick told corrections officials in an email that his wife was working, but he didn't give any specifics, and I found nothing in his parole file showing an income from Carlita Kilpatrick. And since Kilpatrick limited the time of our interview, I wasn't able to push him as far as I would have liked to on his finances. All right, thanks a lot, Scott.